Hello and welcome. I'm Diane Baden, a member of the ELECT's Continuing Education Committee. We are pleased to present this webinar in our series on RDA, Resource Description and Access. Our presenter today is Kathy Glennon, Head of Special Resources Cataloging at the University of Maryland. Kathy has more than 25 years experience cataloging scores and sound recordings. She currently chairs the Music Library Association's Bibliographic Control Committee and has been active in ALA's Committee on Cataloging, Description, and Access, where she worked on development of RDA instructions in relation to music materials. At any time during the webinar, if you have questions for Kathy, please type them into the question box on your screen. Kathy will leave time at the end to respond to as many questions as possible. Please note that we are recording the presentation and you will receive an email shortly after the conclusion of the webinar with a copy of the slides and a link to the recording. And now I will turn the program over to Kathy. There will be a slight pause as we change presenters. Thank you, Diane. I'd like to welcome all of you to this webinar, and I'd like to tell you that I will be using the term scores in the generic sense today so that it applies to all notated music, so don't be surprised. Because of the time limitations we have for today's webinar, I will be presenting the changes in the context of three specific examples. At the end of the presentation, I will provide links to other presentations that have taken a more systematic approach in identifying the major changes between RDA and AACR2 when it comes to cataloging music. The examples we're going to look at today incorporate instructions from RDA, interpretations from the Library of Congress policy statements known as the LCPS, and my own catalogers judgment. The LCPS have been developed for LC's own use, but they are fully incorporated into the RDA toolkit and are available for all users to consult. As we approach full RDA implementation in the United States, additional guidance should be available from other organizations. The Program for Cooperative Cataloging is working on developing policies and training materials for RDA and the Music Library Association has begun work on best practices documentation that will supplement other guidelines with an eye toward addressing situations particular to music materials. My first example consists of a string trio, but it's just the set of parts. I have no official title page which means that I need to consider which of these two sources on your screen will serve as my preferred source of information. As you can probably see, the cover, or outer wrapper, has a list of titles with my item checked off. The parts each have a similar title page-like construction, as in the example of the violin part. Before I continue, I should note that in all of the examples that you will see throughout this presentation, I am following the capitalization practices from RDA's Appendix A, which correspond with AACR2's capitalization practices. I have also used the AACR2 form of access points in the examples if they were already present in the Name Authority file. RDA has a single set of instructions for selecting the preferred source for all resources with pages, leaves, sheets, or cards, so scores are included in these instructions. As you can see, one change from AACR2 is that a cover title is always preferred over a caption title, even for scores. Even though AACR2 briefly mentions how to treat list title pages, RDA and the LC policy statements both have no provision for these. For the purposes of this webinar, I have chosen the cover title. However, it would also be reasonable to select the first page of the violin part since everything on that source represents the resource except for the specific designation of the violin part 
so that's a matter of catalogers judgment. The major difference between these two choices is in the transcription of the title. In either case, because I did not find a traditional title page, I will have to add a note on the source of the title to my record, which you will see in the complete example. The list title page, in this case also the cover, meets the RDA requirement of bearing a title that is formally presented. Because I can ignore the information that is not relevant for my particular set of parts, I have only reproduced the relevant portions of the cover here. The Mark 245 field that I just put on this slide is a transcription of the title information, which includes the punctuation that is present on the source. My next step is to record the information related to that second X checked off on the cover. In a significant change from AACR2 and ISBD, RDA does not contain any instructions for recording a musical presentation statement. Instead, this concept found in AACR2 5.3b is encompassed by RDA's designation of edition. This means that in RDA you use the 250 field any time you would have used the 254 field in an AACR2 record. In this case, you can see that I've transcribed the part statement from the cover. I would do this even if I had chosen the violin part as the source of title, since the addition statement can come from anywhere in the resource. The elimination of the musical presentation statement means that designations such as high voice also go in a 250 field. This change means that catalogers will likely encounter more situations where there are two edition statements. Because the 250 field is not repeatable, both statements will need to go into a single field, separated by a comma, such as vocal score, updated edition. The punctuation and capitalization conventions here come directly from ISBD. RDA has separate elements for publication date and copyright date. In AACR2, the copyright date often substitutes for a publication date. This is not the case in RDA. The copyright date on the violin part title page is 1970, so I have used that as a supplied date of publication. Optionally, you can add the copyright date as well. Since this was an important identifying element in AACR2 for scores, it's reasonable to add this information to RDA records as well. This is one area where a best practices document could provide more definitive guidance. Moving on, we'll skip looking at the extent in detail for this example, since there is no significant change in the Mark 300 field for a set of parts between AACR2 and RDA. The new Mark 33X fields for content, media, and carrier type are used instead of AACR2's general material designation for all materials, including scores, even though in the U.S. we did not use the GMD of music in AACR2. The instructions for these three elements come from different places in RDA, 6.9, 3.2, and 3.3 .3, respectively. In almost all cases with scores, the 3.3x fields will be as you see on this slide. Moving on to the notes for this example. As you can see, the instructions that govern what can be recorded as notes do not appear together in RDA the way they do in AACR2. I've already mentioned why I needed the first 500 title from cover. The second note about the facsimile comes from the violin part. Because notes are free text, I've paraphrased this statement in English rather than quoting the French phrase. Depending on your institutional policy or other guidelines, you could add additional notes beyond what I show here. This could include stating the medium of performance in English, after all, it's in French in the 245 field, and the format of notated music, which is also used in the 300 subfield A. Although putting this information in the record twice may seem redundant, 
Recording these as separate elements could prove useful in future data structures other than MARC. I have not included these elements in this example, but I recommend looking for best practice guidelines about these kinds of issues as we get closer to RDA implementation. Notice my third note, staff notation, uses the 546 subfield B. While this is not a common use of the 546 field to date, the MARC definition of subfield B says, quote, name of the alphabet, script, or information code that is used to record the language, unquote. The list of examples in the documentation includes musical notation systems, so it really belonged there all along. The LCPS for RDA 7.13 makes form of musical notation a core element, so we'll be seeing more use of 546 subfield B in RDA records. Here is my almost complete, complete record for this set of parts, minus the mark fixed fields and the relevant subject headings. You've seen most of these fields already in the previous slides, so I will just note that in this example, the 246 field is used the same way as in AACR2, and that the 300 field should look quite familiar. My second example is a compilation of solos for flute by Ian Anderson, taken from songs performed by Jethro Tull. From what I can tell, this collection consists primarily of flute solos from particular songs, but perhaps additional melodies from those songs as well. Here, the title source is straightforward, but the publication information is not. So I will skip over the title and statement of responsibility, and we'll start with the issues surrounding the publication statement. The Chrysalis Music Group only appears on the front cover, with no place to publication information. Warner Brothers appears on the back cover. They look to be filling either a publisher or distributor role. Unfortunately, I have no publisher anywhere on the title page or the title page verso, and I also cannot find a date of publication anywhere on the item. RDA 2.8.1.4 sets forward the transcription guidelines for publication statements. Notice that unlike with AACR2, you will not give the name of a publisher or distributor in the shortest form in which it can be understood and identified internationally. Instead, it is transcribed exactly as it appears. You may already know that RDA does not permit most abbreviations. This includes the Latin SL for an unknown place of publication. Thus, in creating the publication statement, I have used the phrase place of publication not identified in the 260 subfield A instead, per RDA 2.8.2.6. Because this is a supplied element, it is enclosed in square brackets. Because of RDA 2.8.1.4, I have also recorded the Warner Brothers statement exactly as it appears in the piece, spelling out the words as they spell it out and using the abbreviations that they used. As I mentioned earlier, this piece has no stated publication date. Each of the 18 flute solos has a separate copyright date. The latest of these is 1977, which I could use as an inferred publication date. However, some searching on the Internet leads me to believe that Warner Brothers issued this publication around the year 2000. It was originally published in 1978. So I've decided to supply 2000 as an estimated date of publication. Moving on to the 300 field, RDA Chapter 3 gives instructions for recording extent, including what AACR2 called the specific material designation, which is recorded in 300 subfield A. Chapter 3 has specific instructions for notated music. Note that the terms that I will record actually appear in Chapter 7. Thankfully, in the RDA toolkit, the instruction reference is a hot link 
so I can jump to those terms easily. A significant difference between AACR2 and RDA is the definition of the term SCORE. In RDA, the definition has been broadened and now includes works for a solo performer. Thus, RDA records will never use the construction P period of music or the related V period of music or leaves of music. All those would be called scores in RDA. In this instance, even though my work is for solo flute, the Mark 300 field will not read 48 pages of music. Instead, it will be one score, 48 pages. You may have noticed the absence of a period at the end of the RDA extent statement. RDA considers CM a symbol instead of an abbreviation. In RDA records that use ISBD punctuation conventions, the 300 field will only end in a period if the final term itself is an abbreviation or if a series statement follows. I'd like to look now at two elements that AACR2 has categorized as notes but that RDA does not. The first is what RDA calls identifiers for the manifestation. These include ISBNs, UPCs, and other internationally recognized schemes, as well as music publisher and plate numbers. Each of these identifiers is a character string that differentiates one manifestation from another. There are separate instructions in RDA 2.15 for the two types of numbers associated with notated music, publisher number and plate number. Because these are not standardized numbers, they do not have a prescribed display. Therefore, they are transcribed as they appear on the resource, including any alphabetic prefixes or suffixes. The RDA instructions do not provide guidance for labeling this data in an iReadable note. They simply say to record the number. However, to provide users with the appropriate context, if the publisher or plate number needs to be recorded in an iReadable note instead of being generated from the 028 field, I recommend providing an introductory phrase to match what, have, what would have appeared in AACR2, but without using abbreviations. So you can see you would spell out plate number and not abbreviate it PL period, NO period. The identifier for the manifestation is a core element, with RDA preferring an internationally recognized identifier if applicable. However, I strongly recommend going beyond the core element here. Music publisher and plate numbers have great significance in identifying scores. In a few minutes, you will see the near-complete mark record for this example, which includes fields for the ISBN, UPC, and music publisher number. Again, exceeding the core requirements is a matter of catalogers' judgment and an area to look for best practice guidelines in the future. The second is what we've commonly referred to as a contents note in AACR2. This terminology is not used in RDA, and thus it's not obvious where to find the relevant instructions, since they are no longer a type of note. Instead, RDA considers these a structured description of the related works. They convey a whole part relationship. This means that the instructions and examples for contents notes are in Chapter 25 of RDA. For Mark 21 purposes, the contents note is still in Field 505. While RDA examples use the display text contains you may still encode the 505 first indicator as zero to generate a display constant of contents in a MARC record. The differences between these terms are not substantial, and in the future the text generated from the MARC display constant could change to match the RDA examples. Here's the contents note for my second example. There are no changes in my transcription of these 18 titles from what I would have done 
under AACR2. Now that we've considered the descriptive elements, it's time to think about access points. RDA removes the AACR2 concepts of main and added entries and replaces them with authorized access points. These are constructed in a similar, but not necessarily identical fashion from AACR2. When naming a work in RDA, the authorized access point is made up of the authorized name of the creator when applicable, plus the preferred title of the work, along with any other elements needed to distinguish this access point from others like it. These required additions to access points will be another area to watch for best practice guidelines as we get closer to implementation. The preferred title for this example needs to be some sort of collective title, since I have an incomplete collection of works by Ian Anderson. Per RDA 6.14.2.8, when the compilation consists of works by a single composer, the collective title will be as precise as possible to represent the nature of the collection, including works of various types for one broad medium of performance, such as vocal music, works of various types for one specific medium of performance, such as orchestra music, works of one type for one specific medium or various media, such as songs. If you have the complete works, use works. If any of these categories, if the collection is not complete, RDA has an alternative instruction to add the term selections to the term selected as the preferred title. This includes creating the preferred title of works selections, returning to the AACR1 practice rather than the AACR2 equivalent of simply using selections in this case. Because I could categorize this collection of flute solos as coming from Anderson's songs, I did not have to use the works selections construction here. I have added the term arranged to the final version of the authorized access point for this compilation since the title page includes the statement arranged by Jeff Rona. Thus, in the final version of the access point for this work, the only difference between the AACR2 and RDA versions is the unabbreviated term arranged in the 240 subfield 0. In thinking about my authorized access point for the arranger, I need to consider his relationship to the resource. AACR2 emphasizes only a few important relationships, including related works and the relationship between the person named in the statement of responsibility and the title proper. RDA takes a much broader view. It has chapters about recording relationships between works, expressions, manifestations, and items, the Ferber Group 1 entities, about recording relationships between persons, families, and corporate bodies, Ferber Group 2 entities, and will eventually also have chapters about recording relationships between concepts, objects, events, and places, the Ferber Group 3 entities. RDA also contains chapters that address the relationships between the various Ferber Group entities, such as Chapter 19, Persons, Families, and Corporate Bodies Associated with the Work. To clearly convey relationships, RDA also has three appendices that contain terms to use as relationship designators in specific situations. Appendix I addresses relationships between a resource and persons, families, and corporate bodies associated with the resource. Appendix J contains designators for relationships between works, expressions, manifestations, and items. Appendix K provides terms for relationships between persons, families, and corporate bodies. These appendices contain terms and not codes. When recording relationships between persons and the Ferber Group 1 entities of work, expression, manifestation, and item in Appendix I, 
This means using subfield E in a 700 field instead of the equivalent or near equivalent subfield 4 relator codes. Thus in this example, I have used subfield E and spelled out arranger instead of using subfield 4ARR. Here is my almost complete record for this publication. Again, minus the mark fixed fields and the relevant subject headings. I also omitted the standard score 33x fields to improve the readability of the example on the screen. As with AACR2 mark records, I am assuming that appropriate displays for end users can be generated for the ISBN, the UPC, and the publisher number from the O2X fields. In RDA records, you should use the MARC con input conventions for entering these numbers, such as recording the ISBN without hyphens. In situations like this, the standards for the encoding scheme trump the RDA examples. You will see that while I have provided a relator term for the arranger in the 700 subfield E, I have not done the same for the composer in the 100 field. This is because I consider that the 100 plus 240 fields together name the work and already convey the appropriate relationship. Please note that this is my own catalogers judgment at this point. However, I anticipate that there will be definitive guidance coming from the program for cooperative cataloging on this matter. Their work is scheduled to be completed prior to RDA implementation. My third example is a study score of Bartok's Cantata Profana. A study score is one that is issued with a reduced image or font size and is intended for study instead of for performance. Although the title is fairly straightforward here, the statements of responsibility appear in different places. As you can probably see, the translators are only listed on the page facing the title page. However, this does not mean that the translators are relegated to a note in my RDA record. In fact, I will record them in the 245 subfield C without using square brackets, which I would have been required to provide under AACR2. This is because RDA permits a greater range of locations for where to take statements of responsibility than AACR2 does. RDA sources of information for this element start with the title page, then another source within the resource. If neither of those is sufficient, you may move on to use external sources mentioned in RDA 2.2.4, accompanying material, a container that was not issued with the resource, published descriptions of the resource, or any other available source, including reference sources. If the data is not found in the resource itself, it is enclosed in square brackets. RDA provides the same flexibility in sources for the place of publication, again laying out a preferred order for where to look. The only clear statement about the place of publication for this score is on the back cover and that is associated with the publisher's website address. There's no information on the title page or title page verso, and it's not appropriate to take the place of publication from the copyright statement because they are serving different purposes, and the copyright statement is the only other place that Vienna is mentioned. For this example, I have followed RDA's core requirement and, as you will see later, I have recorded only the first place of publication. This is a difference from the minimal standard required by AACR2, where I would transcribe the first place of publication and, if that place was not in my home country, I would add the first of any subsequently named places in my home country. Again, the decision to go beyond core requirements will be governed by many things, including national standards, local policies, and catalogers' judgment. In this case, 
RDA does not forbid recording all three places of publication if desired. The RDA instructions for where to find the publisher's name follow this same pattern. The same source as the title proper, somewhere else in the resource, and external sources. Looking closely at this score, I find Universal Edition and the UE logo on the front cover. The UE logo is also on the title page. However, I consider that to be a logo and not actually the name of the publisher. As I mentioned a minute ago, Universal Edition's website appears on the back cover in association with the place of publication. But the website address isn't exactly the name of the publisher. The page facing the title page and the first page of music contain identical list of copyright holders. Copyright 1934 by Universal Edition. Copyright 1939 assigned to Boozy and Hawks Incorporated. English Translation Copyright 1955 by Boozy and Hawks Incorporated. However, these are copyright statements and not publication statements. So it turns out that my best source for the publisher's name is the front cover. Having determined the place of publication and the publisher, the only element left to figure out for the complete publication statement is the date of publication. As with many scores, including both of my previous examples, no date of publication appears. In this case, I have three options. Supplying in square brackets, date of publication not identified, per RDA's instructions. However, this then still requires that I find some other appropriate date to include, such as the distribution, manufacture, or copyright date. Or, I can estimate the publication date based on the latest copyright date. Or, I can infer the date from the printing date that I found on the back cover. Using cataloger's judgment, I've chosen that latter option, while also deciding to record the latest copyright date in my 260 field per RDA 2.11. A significant change from AACR2 to RDA is the elimination of the term miniature score in favor of study score. This change was prompted by concerns about ambiguities associated with the AACR2 term. The change terminology used in RDA emphasizes that the term used to qualify this type of score is about the intended use of the resource, not the size of its type. My 300 field also includes two sequences of pagination. The preface is separately numbered from the score. This practice, other than spelling out the word pages, is the same as under AACR2. This score prompts some notes that were not needed in the other two examples. I've opted to use a note about the form of the work as my first note. This is based on RDA 6.3.1.3 and uses the new Mark 380 field for form of work. Even though my medium is stated in the 245 field, I've decided that the more precise statement, which specifies the number of choruses, is needed here. Providing this information in English may also be helpful to end users. Instructions are found in 7.21.1.3. In spite of RDA's general avoidance of abbreviations, you can still use the standard voice abbreviations, as I have done here. The complete list of acceptable abbreviations is in RDA Appendix B.7. Instructions about recording the language content come from RDA 7.12.1.3. Notice that I created separate 546 fields for the language content and the form of musical notation. Because these elements are separately subfielded, it would also be appropriate to create only one 546 field that contains both subfields. Best practice guidelines should also address this issue. 
Instructions about the duration statement, which encompasses the performance time for notated music, come from RDA 7.22. However, those instructions say simply to record the duration as stated on the item. As with the publisher and plate number, they make no mention of using a label or introductory phrase for this information. Because Mark does not have the capability of having the system automatically supply duration as part of the display of a 500 field, this type of note will still need to start with that term to provide end users with the appropriate context. This score contains both a German and an English translation of the original Hungarian text. In RDA parlance, this means that the resource actually contains two language expressions. Unlike in AACR2, where both languages are appended to the title in the 240 field, in RDA each language expression gets its own access point, both using the 700 fields. Thus, my complete record will not contain a 240 field. The resource will be named by a combination of the composer and the title of the manifestation. In other words, through a combination of the 100 and 245 fields, leaving the expressions to be named in these 700 author title authorized access points. Here you can see the results. This looks especially strange, I think, to people familiar with AACR2. Here is my near complete example. As before, I've omitted a few things to make the display clearer. So again, we're lacking the mark fixed fields and the subject headings. I've also omitted the standard numbers, which I would have here, the ISBN, ISMN, and UPC, and the standard 33x fields for scores. I have used the 240 fix field to generate access for the alternative German title and I've used the subfield E relator term of translator with the personal names in the 700 fields. I'd like to look briefly now at the new elements available in MARC authority records. The MARC formats were recently updated to allow for greater granularity in coding so that MARC elements would better match their RDA equivalents. This included adding a wide range of new fields and subfields in the authority format. Some of these changes were specific to personal names. New subfields in the 046 field allow for separate coding of birth and death dates. The 370 field may contain the town city, province, state, and or country associated with a person's place of birth, death, residence, and or identity. With this 371 field, you can even encode the address of a person's place of residence or business. The 372 and 374 fields contain related but separate information. The 372 is for a field of endeavor or area of expertise while the 374 is for an individual's profession or occupation. The 375 can contain information about an individual's gender. Any or all of these additional elements could be added to Bartok's name authority record. These elements would not replace anything in the existing record, but would simply su supplement what is already there. In this example, the 046 field gives specific birth, subfield F, and death, subfield G dates, even though these are identical to what already appears in his authorized access point. In the 370 field, place names are recorded in the form that would be used if these were needed in an access point, per RDA 6.2.2.4. Subfield A is for the place of birth, subfield B is for the place of death, and subfield C is for the country with which Bartok is identified. Field 374 contains occupations associated with Bartok. P. 
PCC guidelines issued this summer say to capitalize each of these terms. And field 375 gives Bartok's gender. Fully encoding and indexing this type of information throughout the authority file could enable significant improvements in how results are delivered to end users. For example, with this type of information, you should be able to get a list of 20th century Hungarian ethnomusicologists with Bartok as one of your results. Similar encoding enhancements were made for mark fields associated with works and expressions. Language, form of work, the unfortunately named catch-all 381, other distinguishing characteristics of work or expression. And you can see the 382 through 384 fields are exclusive to music. Looking at how these new fields could be applied to our Bartok example with the cantata profana. I will not try to pronounce the original Hungarian. The 377 field identifies the language associated with the work in its original expression using the familiar MARC language codes. The 380 field gives the form of the work. Field 382 records the medium of performance using the terms from RDA Chapter 6, which govern the creation of authorized access points. The two 383 fields contain thematic index numbers from separate sources. The subfield C is specific to thematic index numbers. Other subfields are available in the 383 for serial and opus numbers. If these thematic index numbers were used in authority records as part of regularly identifying Bartok's works, the 383 fields would also contain a subfield D that identifies that thematic index and a subfield 2 citing the source of the subfield D term. That source subfield 2 and that subfield D term will be taken to reference the Music Library Association's thematic indexes used in the Library of Congress NACO Authority File website, which is hotlinked from the MARC documentation. Field 384 contains the key. The first indicator value records the relationship of the key to the original, if known. Since I'm creating a record for the original, understandably, the zero means it's the same key. Recording this type of information in the authority record allows for clearly identifying information that is always associated with the work. This should save the time of the cataloger in not having to consult reference sources each time. It also allows for retrieval of information based on those characteristics in a similar fashion to what could happen with personal names. For example, when this data is fully encoded and indexed, I should be able to identify all of the Hungarian secular cantatas that are represented by authority records, regardless of who composed them. If you would like to see the presentations available from the February 2011 RDA pre-conference given at the annual meeting of the Music Library Association, visit the first link on this slide and look under the heading RDA documentation on that page to find the relevant links. These include some full examples. I also recommend the second presentation prepared by Danielle Peradi for the International Association of Music Libraries, Archives, and Documentation Centers Congress in 2010. And now we have time to take your questions. Thank you, Kathy. This is Diane again. Um, we have a couple of questions that have already been submitted, and if uh, any of you out there have additional questions for Kathy, type them into the question box, and we'll get to as many as we can. Um, the first question uh, says, um, you said that CM is not followed by a full stop unless a series follows. Is this true in a MARC record when CM is at the end of the 300 and then a 490 field comes next? This is um, governed specifically by ISBD and it has to do with the, ins the instructions in ISBD which I find to be a little 
personally a little out of date in terms of at the field ends. The, the next field is preceded by a full stop if it's starting a new paragraph and such things, which we don't really do in our records now. I'm trying to go back and find my notes specifically on that so I state this correctly. Um, so hold on just a moment here. Problem with remembering which example this was. Um, so the 300 will end in a period if the term is an abbreviation itself, so CM is not, and it will end in a period if a series statement follows. But if there is no series statement and the final term itself is not an abbreviation, there is no period or full stop. Okay, um, another abbreviation question. Is the abbreviation MIN period minutes allowed under RDA? Yes, it is. Uh, RDA has a, a few exceptions about abbreviations um, that benefit music people who like to abbreviate. Um, durations can be abbreviated, so hours, minutes, and seconds. Um, dimensions, um, if you were using inches, they can be abbreviated. We mentioned the SATB example, and also uh, I'm very grateful that thematic index numbers do not need to be spelled out. <laughs> right. <laughs> Is the information in field 380 drawn from a standardized list? I do not believe so. I would have to double check RDA itself, um, but I do not believe that that is a closed list. Okay. Um, is there an anticipated date when MLA best practice information will be available? Um, there is a task force that has started work on this and they are simply trying to collect areas to identify best practice needs at the moment. Um, I know some of those people are on this webinar today and I will make sure that they get my comments about where I thought best practices would be useful. Um, I anticipate that MLA would like to have this out in time, that it would be useful for people as they get closer to RDA implementation, but there's no specific date yet. Who is currently cataloging music in RDA on OCLC? Are you? Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, there are a number of institutions that participated in the U.S. Library's national test of RDA last year who continued to catalog in RDA. And among those groups are Stanford, the Brigham Young, uh, University of Chicago, and the Library of Congress is, I understand, getting ready to ramp back up to catalog at least some music using RDA, um, I think maybe next, as soon as next month. Okay. Um, is there a vocabulary list for musical notations in the 546 subfield B? RDA does provide a list of suggested notations. And again, I would have to go back and look at the specific instruction. Um, so there is a list there of about probably no more than 10 or so terms. My recollection of that instruction is that you can also supply additional terms if none of the list is applicable to what you have. Okay, um, we have two questions that are kind of the same question. They have to do with um, the 384 field in the authority record and the fact that you do not indicate major or minor. Is there some convention for that? In this particular case, um, the authority record already, or perhaps uh, New Grove, I can't remember which, where I found this now, um, something indicated that Bartok's Cantata Profano was in D, and that's all it said. Um, AACR2 had us recording major or minor if it was stated clearly, and 20th century composers sometimes chose not to be that focused and just sort of have a key around it, but without the mode, without major or minor. If it had clearly stated major or minor, I would have included that in the 384 field. Okay. Um, are there any suggestions from the testers with regard to the cataloging of scores? Do you expect certain issues will be addressed by the JSC before the 2013 implementation? 
I'm trying to think what the JSC is discussing next month. Um, they are looking at something like 27 proposals for change. I'm not sure anything was specific to music that I, that for scores off the top of my head. Um, the JSC process is understandably a slower one than one that could be addressed by um, best practices guidelines because international buy-in is required. Um, so I think if, if we find shortcomings for scores in the short term, this is what the Music Library Association groups are looking at right now, is how can we get the best practices guidelines out there? Let's identify the issues that music specialists find especially difficult in RDA and find a way to get proposals working through the JSC to get incorporated in RDA. But until we can do that, let's issue some best practice guidelines or some, something else that allows music catalogers to proceed and um, get the results that we need without having to wait horribly for um, the process that the JSC takes. Okay. Um, this is only a part of a question, so I'm not sure if it's going to make sense to you. It says duration in another language. Does that mean anything? Well, um, duration is supposed to be recorded in the form that it appears on the item. Okay. Um, it, so if it uses colons instead of min and sec, you certainly can do that. But RDA specifically says to take it in the form that it appears on the piece. So if that helps, it, is, it essentially is transcribed. Okay. How would you enter pagination in the 300 field for multiple scores bound together? I would have to think about that um, because I, would, I don't want to give you an answer off the top of my head since I can't look it up. Um, okay, it's, well, it's similar to the approach taken in AACR2, however. I can, I can say that. That's nice and vague without being helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said that the associated places in the 370 field were entered in authority or entry form, but the examples didn't seem to be New York, New York, for example. Um, they should have been New York in New York. That was my intention. Um, I apologize if they were not. Um, the, they are supposed to be recorded in the form that the RDA access point would take. Um, well, it's needed in an RDA access point. So that's the intention. I had originally had in here the form of those names that appeared in the 670 for that authority record. And those were not the appropriate forms for this. And I changed them to reflect the appropriate forms for RDA for this example. OK. My understanding is that language is only to be recorded at the expression level. Your bar talk work record example includes a 377 for language. Where is this justified in RDA? Has something changed? No, um, that was probably a reach. <laughs> um, I, I would love to record that kind of thing. It took me a while uh, when picking up this particular piece, which was in my personal backlog for cataloging, uh, to determine that the original language was Hungarian. But the, the questioner is correct that language is an expression level and therefore really should not have been in that authority record for the work. Okay. Um, can you use the key signature to clarify the key mode of the work? I'm not quite sure where that no. Questions coming from. I mean, you in a score, you should be able to identify the key of the work by the key signature and where the music centers around the tonality. Um, often, works that have an associated key and external reference source will also identify the key, and that's. You should only include the key if you're confident that that is the key. Okay. Um, could you please go over the difference between the AACR2 Uniform Title 240 and how you use the 700 for the bar talk? So I assume this is a, in reference to the fact that I had the two different language expressions and I don't do the 240 English and German in, in what in AACR2 would have been the uniform title, but do two separate 700 fields. 
Um, so I apologize if that's not actually the question. Um, the difference here is in ACR2, we didn't make an intellectual separation in these expressions, and we created a single access point for the work and then appended whatever language combinations we had, included if we had, what was it, three or more, we had polyglot in there instead of actually listing languages. RDA takes us away from that. This is, there is a separate publication. The, the, the score contains two completely separate expressions. One is an expression of this work in English. One is an expression in German. And they don't really, RDA considers them to be completely separate just because the lines of text are right under each other between the staves. They are still separate expressions and essentially deserve their own authorized access point. And one does not take precedence over the other. In AACR2, we had very specific instructions about which language came first when we were putting languages in uniform titles. Okay, um, how would you handle a contributor that has multiple relator functions for the same item? I would personally continue a string of subfield E's with the different terms, and because they are separately subfielded, order really shouldn't matter. Um, but of course, your local system could be quite different <laughs> in terms of what's required. Okay, I'm going to throw in one final question before we wrap up, and it may be impossible for you to answer in two minutes, but what is the greatest benefit of RDA for music catalogers, in your opinion? <laughs> wow, I've been involved in, in the review of RDA for so long that it's hard for me to, to think rationally about this. Um, one thing I tell you it's done for me is it's actually allowed me to think about elements separately. And, and, and really think very carefully about why we do what we do. In terms of what I would like to see us do, I would say is maybe the most in, in enhancing those authority records. Uh, to me, adding the granularity, um, being able to then fully index those special things. Um, I've heard people talk about you could get a list of female Spanish composers active in the 20th century uh, to get that out of our cataloging data rather than trying to, to figure out how to search a reference source to get that kind of information would be really, I think, remarkable use of data that's already there but not currently parsed in a way that systems can do much with it. Um, it has been a lot of there's a lot of struggle. There's a lot of challenges ahead of us. Some of the challenges we have still for music focus on the best way to, to create these authorized access points for musical works and expressions. And that's something where MLA is still going to be spending a fair amount of time um, trying to clarify for all of us, trying to, get, trying to identify where the consistency is critical and, and where its, its flexibility is fine is maybe one of our biggest challenges. Okay, there were only a handful of questions that we didn't have time to answer, and Kathy will prepare answers for those, and we'll send them out to you um, at a later time. At this point, I'll take the screen back and um, close. So, first of all, thank you so much, Kathy, for helping us understand the differences between AACR2 and RDA for scores. Um, we have two more webinars coming up in the RDA series, including Kathy's return next week to um, give us her presentation on RDA basics for sound recordings. And again, there is special pricing if you register for more than one of these webinars in the series. Um, be sure to check the ELEX website for uh, registration information, upcoming webinars, and any other continuing education events. Um, attendees will receive an online evaluation form from ELEX. Please respond. We value your input. We welcome your suggestions for new webinars. Um, and you will find a form for submitting proposals for new webinars on the ELEX website. Before we sign off, I would like to thank Wade Wyckoff for providing technical support for today's webinar. Um, we appreciate your attendance today, and we look forward to sharing other topics with you in the future. Have a good day. <laughs>